time. Uh, I'm your moderator, Kyle Bossman. Joining us, as always, is the uniquely talented and knowledgeable panel. Uh, sitting in the Brandon Jones seat is actually Elise Willems this week. Hey, guys. <laughs> You're not Brandon Jones. You seem nervous. You already I'm seem always nervous. nervous. Please don't be nervous. We're thing. trying to... No, I'm super. I'm great. I'm glad to be here. Love Brandon Jones. Love GTA 5. So glad that you guys asked me to be here. Um, as the representative for that game. Okay. So, Let's just be clear, thank that's, you. What I, that's how I said, like, please don't be nervous. Uh, you know, we love, we have Brandon Jones because he loves GTA 5, and at least took that literally. Uh, you don't have to love GTA 5 to, oh, okay. to take that seat, yeah. but, it, but it does help. Yeah. <laughs> uh, next to her, always correct 100% of the time, Daniel Bloodworth. <laughs> is, this a, is this a prediction? What happened? Uh, uh -oh. that, is, that is a result of that. <laughs> More side bets, huh? And then lastly, but not leastly, Michael Damiani. Uh, leastly. I like that. <laughs> Someone who has never played GTA V. You've really? never played GTA V? I haven't either. I have never touched What's it. What's going on with you two? I don't know. We've already, a... we've already been through this, and I've been berated in the comments and such stuff. So I, okay. I don't think there's yes. anything wrong with it, but you might surprise yourself. Yeah, I have nothing against it. I just haven't played yeah. it yet. Okay. Is, it is a huge it's game. life. Life happens. It's, a, it's, a, it's an investment to hop into yeah. that game. It's not a, it's not a quick one. Uh, we should explain that the reason Brandon Jones is gone is that he is on jury duty for Ooh. maybe three weeks. Brandon he's, Jones, he's doing like, out justice. Yeah. <laughs> That's real. what I was thinking about. At first I was like, oh man, that sucks. But then I was thinking, if I was ever in court, I would love for a Brandon Jones to be on the jury. If you look out and you see that... That hero face, and it's Brandon Jones. Chin, yeah. I yeah, I just my all my fears would be just qualm. <laughs> hero face. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean he does. He does yeah, have a he hero face. The, the juror we deserve. Yes. I'm glad that we got to have some laughs out of the way because our, our news this week is pretty grim news. Grim. Grim news. I don't know. Ooh. Okay. What's what, what, what what bugging you, Kyle? Oh, what, are you about? what happened? Facebook purchased Oculus for two billion dollars. April first is next week. This yeah. is not April 1st yet. This was real news. This is something yeah. that happened. I'm, this is part of me that, like, you know. What? I'm representing the internet. Where, I don't think I'm this the, is I'm the, I'm the, anywhere near I'm the, I'm the, I'm the, I'm the internet. Stuff. I'm the internet in human form, apparently. Do you and think Facebook and Oculus Rift are going to troll you for a week? Is, yes. that, what you're, yes. is that what you're surmising they're, 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 they're doing that. I want to put it past Mark Zuckerberg. I saw the film. <laughs> I saw what he did at the beginning of that film. Yeah. The hot or not thing. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> if I am a rich tech geek... He's, uh, and I could make virtual reality become reality. Yeah, I think that's kind of just a no-brainer. Why but. not, right? Yeah, so yeah, I'm, assuming, serious, yeah. <laughs> I'm assuming that by the time viewers and listeners are hearing this, this isn't the first they've heard of this news. No. Uh, by now, there's, I feel like there's not much to say about it. Here's what I want to play. What good can come of this? Blood, what, what good could it come of, of, of Facebook buying Oculus? Um, well... I mean, from what I've read, it sounds like they're pretty on board with letting Oculus do their thing, at least for now in the development phase. So that means that they have stability. They have stability and they have resources to do whatever the crap they want. Mm -hmm. And they have John Carmack. Yeah. I mean, come yeah. on. <laughs> He's still there. John Carmack's still there. Yeah. So, I mean, to me, that's kind of like, you know, the, the, if this thing is, if VR is going to be successful, it's going to be successful. I mean, there's pretty much nothing limiting them at this point. Nothing Facebook could do to ruin VR. I mean, there's things that Facebook could do yeah. eventually, you know, to, with weirdo, like, sketchy, uh, like, pervy applications. But, you know, as far as the development phase of technology, I'm I very... think they're just going to, like, let it grow into what it is and, and let games kind of be the test bed and then move from there. Blood, I'm, I'm very sorry, and I, and I know that I was trying to start with some positivity, but I need you to be specific about what you have in mind when you say pervy application. <laughs> you see those dating, those dating games on Facebook? No. Am I the only one that gets ads for those all the time? I don't know what's up with that. I don't see ads mostly. Oh. They just kind of I just see by. the singles ads or whatever on the side. Yeah, you know, are you single? <laughs> want to date a gamer? It's like, I get ads okay, for things I've already cool. bought, so that doesn't make any sense. I get like Japanese like dating game yeah. ads on okay. my Facebook. I've seen and then those. you would put on your Oculus and, and hop in? Nice. Then it takes, you to <laughs> okay, it takes you to OK Cupid at that point, and then you have nightmares. At, on OK Cupid? Yes. I don't think that's fair. OK Cupid could be good. No, it could be good. But if Facebook was involved, it wouldn't be good. Yeah, it's just, I think, like, it's... So I want to read a comment, actually. This is the comment right. I plucked from this week. It's from Captain Kirk on, on our show. <laughs> yeah, dude. The future. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. This is legit. He came back in time to say, and just like my hope for the future of gaming is swallowed by the coldest 
inhuman demonic entity known to mankind. Facebook, such a waste. My takeaway from this <laughs> is wow. like, why is Facebook like perceived to be so evil? Because it's gross. I think it's Mark Zuckerberg because people have this this image of him now as this really cutthroat like anything to get ahead kind of guy. Damiani, what did you just whisper? I said hot or not, it'll never go away. So you, <laughs> <laughs> um, no, you know, I mean, I kind of had a similar initial reaction and like Facebook, what? That's like, they weird. Just, yeah, they just have a tendency to like, look at what they do with like the, the, just the front page of Facebook in your timeline. How many times they shift it around, how many times they don't tell you about it. And that's just like the tip of the iceberg. Like for the last several years, the privacy issues, they changed the privacy stuff. Then you see on like your, your you see on your feed, a bunch of people say, uh oh, Facebook changed their privacy settings without warning anyone about these changes. Go in there now and please like change it to this if you want your old settings. Or people will say all of a sudden, strangers are seeing my photos or seeing my comments because I commented on, that stuff's never been very transparent up front. Yeah, well the way yeah. that they ma manipulate the feed as, as well and mm. like they're trying to, you know, they're trying to do things to keep people from getting spammed, but I mean, it seems to yeah. work the opposite. It's like I sign up to our page because I want to know about updates about like people's shows or something like that. And then I don't see them yeah. because like, oh, they want people to pay to advertise to their fans, but their fans are actually wanting to find out what's going on. And so this is weird, like, I don't know, I'm just, yeah. these I'm blocks curious. and how they want to manage things. I'm just curious exactly what they're going to do with the technology. Because I, yeah. for me, I really can't. I really can't imagine what possibly I would want to be doing with an Oculus Rift on, you know, on Facebook, or how they would harness mm -hmm. that technology otherwise. I mean, my my perception visible. of the most, you know, basic application is, you know, like, games. Well, I mean, games, but I mean, in terms of like Facebook, would would be, you know, like a Skype call where you know you've got some little robotic camera in the other room and you can like look around and say hi and whatever. I guess. But... <laughs> it's better not be Facebook <laughs> games. I think. <laughs> Facebook, are, Facebook games, I think, are largely dead. I think they're yeah. making less money. Well, than look what they now. did with games. Like, I think part, at least from people who are a little bit more enthusiastic about gaming as a hobby, their problem, the backlash, I think, comes from Facebook. What they did with gaming, how it kind of how it failed, and Facebook's attitude towards gaming in general. It's kind of lumped in with the whole social mobile gaming, and I think some people expected or still expect Oculus to deliver more. In the, whatever their minds, a more meaningful, quote unquote, hardcore experience for my, my PC. It's gonna be a new type of gaming and more immersive. It's not meant for these stupid. I don't want to play Farmville, Oculus Rift, or, right. or something like that. Uh, yeah. so, so actually, coming off yeah. of that, I mean, Notch said that that day he said, actually, you know what, Minecraft is never gonna be on Oculus now. Mm -hmm. At least, do you see more people, more developers leaving Oculus because of how much Facebook creeps them out? I think, uh, yeah, I think we're seeing the backlash now. My my f initial reaction to this was, what about all the people that kickstarted the Oculus Rift? They feel hurt. It they, seems like largely they feel hurt. Yeah, they they feel hurt and they feel cheated because basically they've just helped propel, you know, these people to a two bill two billion dollar take, which they're not seeing anything of. Um, I think like. It's, it's a business and there will be more developers that will be drawn to it because now they'll think they have s stronger promotion or a better mm -hmm. platform maybe. But yeah, they'll, they'll lose, I think, some more of the, the older, m more serious developers, I feel. Okay, here's another weird application I just thought of this kind of going on another thing. Okay, you're pitching us on an application. I'm ready for okay, this. Okay, so you got? let's say, okay, like so right now, like somebody has just recently like put up pictures of their guest house, which is going to be available for rent, you know, next week. Mm -hmm. It's hard to understand how much space is in that room from a bunch of pictures being trying to taken from inside the room. But if you had like one of those little Google camera things, 360 degree camera, and you could just walk around the room and then put on a headset and then look at like, oh, okay, like I understand, I, I understand this in a like 3D space now. I understand how much room I have to work with. If my bed's gonna fit in there and all that kind of thing. Do you, no way, man. That's yeah. scanning a three D space is so hard. I mean, you're relying on people to have that technology too. I feel like you would need like like two Google cams at all times and like a could like that would take hours. Maybe, but I mean, if if it could just be simple, you know. You know what I want is like the like the, the like the dust cameras you can blow and then the cameras <laughs> all. Like, that's like I feel like it's that's so far ahead that application. But if you want to call Zuckerberg and tell me you have an idea, I think you totally should. 
Yeah, well, I mean, I'm sure they've got plenty of ideas. That's Actually, why they, they bought it. So speaking of that, yeah, because basically it seems like Facebook eventually is going to want this for non-gaming applications. Do you think like this adds more enthusiasm in the gaming space to Project Morpheus? That suddenly, okay, well, Oculus belongs to Facebook now. Is is Morpheus, like, does that get more credit now, do you think? I mean, I think immediately it does. Just looking at the reactions from people, a lot of the knee-jerk reactions have been, uh, screw Facebook, I'm done with Oculus. Oh, thank God, there's Project Morpheus. You know, we're going to get, hopefully Sony takes advantage of this and... There's another. There's another option essentially, and right. now I think the just again, just the immediate reaction is people are looking to what is Sony going to do now because of that. Yeah. There seems to be this backlash. Whether or not it's going to, they're going to have like a the Oculus going to have a negative, you know, image problem going forward, or if they correct it, they put out something like, hey guys, no, the, 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 don't worry, Facebook's not touching us. We're just getting the money. This means we're more stable. Who knows what's going to happen to that? But Sony has a like. This is kind of like when Sony and Microsoft unveiled the new mm -hmm. consoles. This is a moment for, moment for Sony to kind of step in to and tell developers, hey, we're, we're Sony, we already have enough money, I and mean, we've been doing too well the last few years, but we still got money. We don't need an investment from Facebook to keep us stable. So, and you see what we do with PS4, we see how we've been supporting all these game developers, we're gonna give that level of support for, for Morpheus. So, mm -hmm. why don't you come over to us, you know, hey Notch, you wanna do like a yeah. Morpheus version of Minecraft for, for PS4, let, let, let's get that worked out. I mean, that's been Sony's, like, they've been on the mark for that for the last year with their messaging. I think this is where they need to step in and put that message out, and I think developers will respond to that, especially game developers, because they've seen how receptive Sony has been to, like, developers, especially independent developers who seem to be the ones who've been latching on to Oculus so much with the dev kits. But, I mean, I'm not going to rule Oculus out, but that's what um, Morpheus should do. I, I definitely feel like there's, uh, you know, room to be a little worried about there being just like a PlayStation branded VR kit, just because you know, it's like okay, well, if you have the PlayStation one, then does that mean it's only exclusive? Yeah, you can only use it titles, on PlayStation. Yeah. Will they make it? You know, will they open it up to be used for PC games? For ga you know, will games have to like, you know, create APIs to support both Morpheus and Oculus? You know, it's kind of uh, it does kind of open a can of worms to have a platform holder doing something that of that magnitude. But it's interesting. Right, but I think right now, Morpheus might be in position to at least be the best-selling VR headset, in which case you would yeah. want to program for I think it. they'll market it for serious gamers. Serious so, gamers. Sony, I like Mike was saying, I think Sony really likes to be able to have the uh, the opposing side to play off of, like they did with Microsoft, their mm -hmm. whole like trading video. They'll do their... They'll do yeah, their, this is how you VR video now. And like, <laughs> You're so right. Like, yeah, they will do that. Like first, I think that's the, it will be this, the serious gamers VR headset, hardcore gamers VR. Hardcore. Don't get that Facebook one. Serious Doesn't it feel VR. weird? It's just it like a... the VR headset wars. You got console wars. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Here we go. <laughs> VR wars. That's, that's, that's Timefall that's really 2. Happening. Timefall 2 exclusively on Morpheus. Can't play it on Oculus Rift. Or they do a multi-platform version. It's like, oh, there's like... Less frames per second on the, the <laughs> Oculus Rift version and Morpheus. Well, no, it's the smooth, opposite. I mean, there are, well, the Metal Gear there, there yeah. are people that are very concerned about yeah. the consoles being able to have enough yeah. power to, to run VR without issues. So. Right. I'd be down for that. The the threads on GAF about which VR headset runs games better <laughs> and stuff. So it's no longer just your console running it on a TV screen. It's which one it's can run be, the VR. Oh, such a mess. Let me just say, like, I, I th this sounds cool probably try it out, but I'm still sticking with the normal controller, even if this becomes a thing. That did, yeah. That's what the question I, is. I, 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 this sounds exciting, but I'm just like, whenever it does come out, I'll try to be like, cool, You can whatever. still keep your controller. You can still have your controller. I don't, yeah, I don't want to do the headset stuff. I want to watch oh, it on a normal screen and stuff. Like, cool. yeah, whatever. Uh, speaking of console wars, a uh, weird thing happened this past week. Multiple retailers, including Microsoft themselves, are silently selling the Xbox One Titanfall Edition for 450 US dollars. So silently, like they're not marketing it in it's, any of their no like... There's no commercial that says 450 dollars. Not even like local papers yeah, or it's, like it's inserts. It's a sale, not a price drop. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Uh, so it's just temporary. It's, it's perceived to be temporary. What can we, as armchair pactors, take away from this? Titanfall's not meeting sales expectations. That's kind of how I feel is what is going on right now, yeah. Instead yeah. of doing a price cut to Titanfall the game, they're trying, they know people need to buy an Xbox One to play it. They probably have seen, I'm gonna assume, most people who have an Xbox One have probably bought Titanfall by this point. 
So the only new people are going to be able to buy it are people who don't have an Xbox One. So they're lowering that temporarily lowering that cost to jump in on that. That's uh, if things made sense. At least you own an Xbox One, correct? No, I, no, I don't. Oh, okay. I've tried to fall on PC. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like, wouldn't wouldn't correct you feel choice. cheated though? Like, you that, that I purchased it if like you bought one for three five hundred dollars. Yeah, for three months ago, and then bought Titanfall. Like mm -hmm. you're that's like a hundred dollars. You more than that. You lost out on. Yeah, right. I mean, I guess, I guess, like the thing is, also when they came out with the we're doing a Titanfall bundle, there was really no. Like, that was kind of a last-minute thing, almost. It was very last-minute, yeah. So I feel like people kind of maybe were like, oh, I would have gotten that bundle had I known. Yeah. You yeah. know? And I'm sure there's a lot of people that bought uh, Xbox One between Christmas yeah. and, and that bundle. Around Exclusively time. for Titanfall 2, and and uh, that felt kind of like a last-dash effort to try to get sales, you know, drum up sales for it. And um, I, my thing is the whole, like, Oh, Amazon accidentally had it for fifty dollars cheaper. I've been wondering, kind of, if like these accidents, these prices, mm -hmm. are these price drops that you know, oh, twenty four hours, it's it's uh, it's dropped in price and then they fix it. I'm like, is this just their kind of whisper campaign of like, oh, well, we'll accidentally it'll drum up news that oh, it's it's on sale. People will right, and we kind of spread it ourselves. Just yeah, like, we oh, do. You can get it for four hundred dollars on Amazon right now, and then we all do it. Yeah, like it yeah. we talked one morning happened. The Microsoft store had a like. The weird twenty percent off. We were like, "Do we buy it? Do we buy it?" Yeah, exactly. it like, yeah. it's like that's kind of a pretty good strategy. Oh, that, is, that is kind of the weird thing too. Is a lot of these things that have been happening, that like, it being gl glitches or whatever, and like people like yeah. jump on them because they're not sure if it's going to get fixed. Or it, it's really strange. Is that intentional? So, yeah, like that's kind of what I want to talk about because I think there is, if there is a price cut to four fifty, mm -hmm. I think there's a perception that goes along with that. And it feels weird. It feels like menta mentally, like people don't want to see a console get cheaper that quick. Right. No, it's. I feel like there's a sort of stigma that goes with that. Yeah. Well, I feel it feels like desperation. Right. And so, so I think that might be the reason for like these kind sale. of like unofficial yeah. sales that like we kind of whisper about, but there's never a commercial about. Mm. What I, I, I mean, I could see that. I just kind of would rather, or I'd rather hope that companies have been doing this for so long, you know, been in the hardware business that they'd be able to adapt faster and be able to swallow their pride when, hey, our, our console isn't selling as much. And for whatever reason, if we lowered it by $50, we project it would sell this much more. I mean, recoup it, isn't the old adage that like you take a hit on the hardware, you recoup it through software, like, except for like Nintendo until mm -hmm. recently. Nintendo was mm -hmm. always the exception. Everyone else did that way. I, I would just like hope that if you saw your sales like just a little underperform, I mean, I don't know how much it's underperforming. I don't know what Microsoft's sales expectations were for, for the launch window for that quarter. But if they're just under, you, you cut just cut the price by a little bit to, to get competitive. Because right now, there's there's no two ways about it. That PS4 is a superior technical machine for hundred dollars less yeah. than Xbox One. The bundle, the Titanfall bundle, you got the game for the same price as the like the normal Xbox. You got the game for free. Now they now they want to change it uh, under the you know radar or quiet or whatever the yeah, yeah. whispering thing to hey let's like make it fifty dollars less and see like well, a lot of people jump on this. Is this like oh, is this like yeah, is that it. that like insta buy for the average person? Where is that sweet spot? We don't want to go too low because then we're gonna screw ourselves because then people expect it, but. Let's just dip down slowly and very subtly and see where people will bite on this. Yeah. And if it bites there and we like that, then let's make it official and let's get more consoles out there because more developers will be on board. I mean, you are the one of the best selling hardware for most of the last generation, Xbox 360, at least the most popular in the mainstream. I think you still have a window there. Like Nintendo, we always like to do Doom on Nintendo discussion. We, hopefully we don't get to that point with Microsoft. Like They still have this window to fix things if they react a little bit more swiftly. Haven't you heard Nintendo's going to be around for another 50 years? Oh, yes. So, so no, what, for what is that? Oh, there's just some report out that came out recently like money. in uh, like the UK Nintendo Gamer magazine that like they've got enough money, like mm -hmm. cash like just value, that if they wanted to stay yeah. around until like 2040, yeah, they could have like three or four more Wii they'd, U's fail. They'd be fine. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think people should understand, at least here, at least yeah. or at least with me, the shorthand is when I say Nintendo Doom, it means Wii U Doom. Like sure. Nintendo yeah. is by no means going anywhere anytime soon, just a Wii U. But I, 
Microsoft should be able to look at, hey, Nintendo had a lot of problems. They tried to do the price cut. They get a little bit of a bump. Like price cuts, people want to see that. I think last generation, all the systems are just so slow to adapt to that price change. Yeah. Like we was just selling so well, they didn't need to do it. PS3 was just way too overpriced at the beginning. And 360 was kind of in the middle. And then they finally did those um, revisions and price cuts. Yeah, well, the PS3 yeah. price cut came fairly early. It was like... Mid two thousand seven, that summer, and that, right? And yeah, and that still wasn't like that quite was enough. Yeah, that was, that was huge, price, but it wasn't yeah. enough. It was still five hundred dollars. Yeah, that but yeah. that's something where they probably should have started at that price. That was just a really big oversight on Sony's part. So actually, I did want to talk about that second PS three price drop because I feel like that was a shift in perception. Basically, they had the, they started out with those Kevin Butler commercials. They introduced this Kevin Butler. Mm -hmm. He's like, PS three is cheap now. I think they ch at that moment they also changed the logo. I mean, I mean, all from the Spider-Man font yeah. to the yeah. 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 And I think like from that moment forward, perception of the PS3 had shifted. You know what I mean? And I, I think, think those games came out too. Yeah, and games. That's <laughs> well, right. Well, right. That's the best. Point. Well, yeah. I mean, as we're saying right now, I mean, yeah. the first year Sorry. of games is never <laughs> particularly is, great. Yeah, so. They got to figure out a, something to do with new hardware launches. Like every single system has been like whiffing bad with this first year of this being like a drought. Like oh, games-wise. Yeah, th this is yeah. ridiculous. They got, like, if they're gonna do this again, somebody needs to figure out something. Like, you push this, I know there's always a race to be out first because that helps your, the chances that you're gonna but, but, the lead, but. Look at all the things yeah. that have been delayed. I mean, people tried and they're like, well, now we need more time or this is just not gonna go well. That Drive or, club, you know. It's, yeah. You know, it's been delayed time and time again because like, oh, well, you know, we wanna actually make sure this game is good put a lot of time into it, it needs yeah. to be good. And a really big reliance on indies to fill that gap that's existing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And just, they're lucky that they have them to do that. I just wish mm -hmm. that we have, I just remember the, the good old days where we had N64 launch with Super Mario right. 64. <laughs> and yeah. Pilot and, Wing. And I, want, I want that. <laughs> and, and then, then Shadows of the Empire. <laughs> Star Wars Shadows of the Empire. I dare you to play that right now. Shadows Back then it was awesome. Yeah, well, it's not uh, awesome today. There's there's a lot of, Mario Kart. I like that game, but there's a lot of people that there was, it was there's, crap. Okay, there was a drought, but if you like oh. look at then and now, like, you had like Mario 64 and Wave Race 64 come out at launch and Shadows of the Empire. Then in 1997, you had Mario Kart, you had Star Fix 64, you had GoldenEye 007, you had Banjo, Diddy Kong Racing, I believe by the end of the year. And in 98, you had Banjo. There were so many good releases. Zelda, I think, in 98. In 98, yeah. Banjo yeah. Kazooie. Yeah. Man, like, they were all, I guess because I was younger, it seemed like such a long time, like months was a yeah. long time. Now, it's like we've gone like half a year since like launch. We're going to be going half a year and all we got was Titanfall on Xbox One. An infamous second son on PlayStation 4. It's so Enjoy. Kill zone. Both, Enjoy. Of, both of those Ball. both of those are better than uh, Shadows of the Empire. Not better than Mario 64. They're not better than Wave Race 64. Well, nothing's better than Mario 64. Than Mario, Kart. Mario Kart 64. Uh, so I, I, I realized I was a while later. I realized I'm just moderator, but maybe some of you had this feeling. Actually, last week was the first week where I felt like super happy to have the PS4 when I was playing Infamous and in Ground Zeroes. Like that to me, that moment was finally like, okay, we're here. I feel good yeah. about this. That was a big week for PS4. Yeah, Blood, you felt the same way. Dude, yeah, Platinum Infamous. So yeah, he did. We should <laughs> mention that Blood Platinum Infamous. <laughs> and it's only the second Platinum I've got, and the first one was the first Infamous. What are you? Yeah. Why are you not platinuming <laughs> other games? Uh, I don't know. I guess I just look at... Well, you know, like, Uncharted is always like, oh, well, oh, defeat yeah. this freaking <laughs> thing three times, you know. Go into multiplayer, earn the highest possible rating. Well, yeah, it's, it's not that. It's, it's yeah. like, you have to, like, beat all of these difficulty levels, but some of the difficulty levels, like, have to be unlocked first. So I'm yeah. like, you want me to, like, play the game three times just they to do. get the platinum? And like, come on, come on. All right, interesting side conversation. At least, how many platinums have you ever seen in your... How many have you ever gotten? T don't ask me this question, is it Kyle. Zero or is I'm it not five? good at video games. Okay. <laughs> can we stop? You know, so actually, has nothing to do with being yeah, good. Yeah, platinum has nothing games. to do with you. Just like it's just about putting. No, time but in. I I also only got a PS3 within the last two years. Okay, I'm not. Not, I'm, not, I'm not. I'm not really hugely into What's PS3. Up? How many platinums do you have? I don't know. The last one I did was Nino Kuni. You platinum like, really? Oh, of course. Whoa. People, oh, don't, even, people don't finish Nino Kuni. You That's just got right. the most credit at the table. It all belongs to you I don't think now. that was... The only That's hard part was the, uh, the, 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 po credit. the Pokemon part, where you had to get like all the... You had to get one... Capture one unique type of each... Monster, of buddy. The uh, familiars. Yeah, that, that, familiars. that is yeah. a patience that I don't, do not have. That was not, that was not fun. That part was just like... Everything else about that wasn't that 
too terrible for a JRPG. Yeah. Just that part was just like, oh, really? I'm saying it was worth it because now you get to brag about it on a weird show on the internet. <laughs> All of that effort was worth it to get to this point mm, today. I don't, but I can't remember. The last one I tried to do but I just stopped was uh, 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 Tales of Zillia. You were oh. going yeah. to play? Why do you do these RPGs? Yeah, these are like... <laughs> oh my god. We've got to have, have to beat... I have to be the RPG JRPG cred at GT. Yeah. And now I have to now I have to really up my game. Oh, ben, ben Moore Moore's here. Ben, Moore's got ben Moore takes a, <laughs> Ben Moore takes offense every time I get a, a tweet by someone who goes, Damiani, as a resident GT JRPG guru, what would you uh, tell me about this Atelier game series? <laughs> blah blah blah. And then Ben will like come over to me like. Why do they ask you this? Do they not know I work here? Do they not know I know more than JRPGs about you? That's so this funny. Is, I am insulted. Uh, speaking of Ben, who is also, he is at least officially our resident Sonic fan. Can we Sonic. all agree on that? He is our Sonic, Sonic fan. Yeah, he likes Sonic. Gotta go fast. Uh, <laughs> this morning, a trailer out of nowhere came for oh, yeah. Yeah. Legend oh, yeah, of Zelda from, DLC for yes. Sonic the Hedgehog, from, uh, The Lost World. Which will be out yeah. before you guys see this. Yeah, it's right. out now. You can go. <laughs> yeah. It's you free. can download it for free. It's free. That's free DLC. You still gotta buy the game. You still gotta buy the game. That's um, how they get you. <laughs> so basically, I mean. Well, that's a, that's a good way of doing it. It's like people haven't bought the game. Hey, we'll give them something cool. All, all of us here have seen that trailer, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what's. That's, that's why like this enthusiasm coming across at this point probably makes no sense to anyone who hasn't seen the trailer. Right. I saw the headline and I said nope, and then it took a friend of mine to say you, you got to see this trailer. I'm like, what? Why? And I was like, oh my goodness. Really? They, you were excited yeah. for it. Because they already had Yoshi's Yarn, and it was yeah. 2D level. And yeah. it was like, oh, okay, it's a Sonic level that looks like Yoshi. And then they went all out on this Zelda DLC. All right, Elise is the only one unexcited. Please explain to us uh, where just your because... lack of enthusiasm comes from. <laughs> For oh. me, the, the appeal of Sonic game is perpetual motion, perpetual propelling forward, fast, like mm -hmm. frantic. And like this, it's heavy exploration, but not the kind of in-depth ex exploration that you can get from a Zelda. So it kind of feels like... It's halfway Sonic, halfway Zelda. For me, like the the two things that appeal to me most in either of those games aren't, you know, met. And, oh yeah, and it's kind of like how we felt about uh, the stupid uh, Dynasty Warriors Zelda. Yeah. Where it's just like, Hyrule. oh, these don't work. To, yeah, Hyrule. Like, yeah. it's sort of like I appreciate it. It feels more for me like a Nintendo Land level where it's like, okay, I get that. I enjoy being in the world. I love this world, and but like. I'm not getting the full experience of it. Sonic, also, the best thing about Sonic is just feeling like you have this overwhelming momentum and you're just killing it and like, you know, but which you don't feel like doing this. But he is wearing a Link costume. He is wearing a Link costume, so I guess, I guess yeah, I, lo I love it. I cannot it. wait to see the cosplays of that. I love it. But it is, it is super cool to like see like Link flying by while you're, you know, um, you know I will say it's stuff. super cool to see him actually having a, a life bar instead of getting knocked yeah. with all the rings popping out of them. I hate the rings popping. And collecting rupees instead of rings is kind of cool. And uh, Basically, the weirdest thing to me is that it is free DLC. Seems so strange that Nintendo and Sega like made this weird ag agreement to do free DLC for this game. When else have we seen free DLC like this? Well, I mean, it I guess sometimes it depends on how you define DLC. I, yeah, think because, yeah. I mean, Kill Zones all... All their new maps are free. Yeah, but Titan Falls. Yeah, but I mean, like Titan Falls charging ten dollars for you know one of their map packs. Yeah, but is their it new map modes packs though. I don't know. The new other, modes are free. The, the modes map are packs free. are ten dollars. Oh, I didn't know if they said. Uh, that but it's kills on like what? everything multiplayer is free. I think. Um, and then um, what was the other one? Does this feel like? Oh well, the, the infamous, infamous thing. Yeah. That's like an episodic thing. I don't know if you consider right, that DLC yeah, yeah. or not. I guess I consider that. There's new content every week. For the next six oh, weeks. Yeah. See, like Missions. what they showed is basically the level, right? Yeah. Like that's that. Does that feel like big and expansive and like? It, but like, I mean, they didn't show the whole level. I thought they did. I it, it does. It it well, does feel big and expansive to me. And I guess just what's what's baffling is that just like they're supporting this game that probably didn't sell very well. Maybe that's why they're supporting it. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's the thing. It's like they're finding another way to get people to yeah. jump in on it. Yeah. Damiani, will you play that level? Probably. I don't own the game, so I'll just have to bar borrow the work copy. I love and play that it. though, but here's a person who but would have never I'm played not, it. So I'm only the only reason I'm playing it is for the sake of I just gotta see what the hell they're doing with yeah. what crazy crap. It's why I'll probably play it when we discuss Hyrule Warriors. And thanks for playing. Yeah, it's, you nailed it. That's exactly why I have any interest. It's just because it looks so ridiculously crazy. Yeah, and, and 
kind of stupid, honestly. It looks way stupid. No, it should be clear. It looks very, it's, very the, stupid. It's cool that it's free, and they're trying to get people excited about a game that really undersold. Uh, from what I played, the game showed well at previews, but the controls in the final version I don't think were the, like the best. But th that aside, the problem is combining Hyrule Warriors and this, Nintendo's willing to just throw out Zelda, Zelda yeah. to, to help sell things, to, to yeah. give out there. No, now I'm like really worried. I'm, I'm almost, <laughs> I'm at 99.9 .9 to like the hundredth power certain that Zelda is not coming out. But we'll you're, do, you're announcing a new Zelda Thursday, right? Oh yeah, we're announcing a new <laughs> Zelda for iOS. Who is yeah, Mike? Mike had a big Twitter announcement. Yes. That, uh, what? Twitter exclusive. Who, what, is, yeah. what? What is it? That uh, there's a new game called Zelda Timeline. Oh. Okay. For for I for iOS, yeah. and it is the fourth timeline, and you play through. It's got the CDI games. It'll have Hyrule. You're pay, you're paying for a season pass and everything on iOS. You'll get Hyrule Warriors iOS. No, we should be clear. You if you're like trolling me or not right now, what are you doing? We, we were just messing around. Yeah. Stop that. Okay. Why would you? Fourth, you had me going for so long because that's actually a good idea. You should fourth, make an app. A fourth timeline. timeline. You should it's, do it's that. It's just the crossover timeline. Oh my gosh. Where, where shit crosses over with everything. So. Uh, Sonic DLC takes place after Skyward Sword, no, but before <laughs> Hyrule Warriors. It takes place in Zero Worlds. I can't believe you even had me for like two seconds. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Kyle. <laughs> so wrong. So, uh, I guess speaking of reputations and Damiani's reputation for being a master troll. Look how he just stares. Um, that's my smoothest possible transition into this weird thing, the Xbox reputation system being revealed uh, uh, just recently. So the Xbox reputation is a master troll. Yours, your Xbox reputation right now would be needs work. Needs work? <laughs> yeah. That was a good troll. <laughs> that is actually word for word what well, the, that's, the medium that's, ranking that's is. That's fine for me because, you know, Xbox systems, all of them, they can need work. <laughs> when I have to pay for subscribe to gold to use anything on that system, that's needs work. Needs oh my that's gosh. the needs improvement on a report card right there. <laughs> mm -hmm. So let me let me let me cl clarify the three three classifications of a new Xbox reputation level. Okay. Good player. Everyone starts off at good player. Mm -hmm. Does that mean you're skilled good or that no. you're a good sport? It means you're a kind person. Yeah. Okay. You behave very well. All right. You don't cause any trouble. I thought they were gonna like make you you're, play through like revenge. Not made anybody yeah. cry. And if you suck at revenge,ance you get whatever the fun. lowest one no. is. All right. Good player. You're in Elise. Then there's needs work. Then you're dummy eyes. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and so it's like a yellowish greenish. And what's the uh, worst? The worst is avoid me, which is red. I think you'd want the avoid me because like, dude, I'm such a. Badass. But then eventually you don't you yeah. want to come near me. Eventually like, you can so get good. penalized. I mean, you can't go on Twitch. Yeah. So yeah. Oh, you can't avoid, go on Twitch. Avoid me oh, what? Go <laughs> what? What is this crap? No, no, no. Okay. So Actually, they should. Let's do use that. their words just to be very clear. Yeah. Uh, uh, people with an avoid me rating will be reduced. Will have reduced matchmaking pairings and may be unable to use certain privileges oh, such as that's, Twitch broadcast. That's good for them because then they'll make them go and get like something other than an Xbox. <laughs> the master troll. <laughs> Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna bump you somebody, down to avoid like, me. Some, somebody somebody else said that though too. It's like, well, if, if you if you get reduced to avoid me, are you just gonna not renew your subscription? Yeah, that's actually that is insane yeah. to say. Even that that maybe I I doubt it'll ever come to this. You don't get to do this thing that you're paying for. Right. Mm -hmm. Is insane. So is this all peer review? Yes. Yeah, like yeah. people do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So but they say that like, they're going to have ways to keep people from abusing yeah, you. Yeah. 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 I don't know how that works. Like, like if like you're moderator. really good and people just want to knock you down. Or... You have to. You would have to work really hard to get down to avoid me, I think. Like you're doing a Twitch stream and everyone just hates you, so they log on their Xbox One accounts and go, this guy sucks, yeah. avoid him. And you yeah. have to do avoid that him for months. Terrible. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's for a very extended period of time, right? Yeah. Not just like two weeks of you acting like an asshole. Yeah, it's you like, have to be a month of that. All right. Yeah, I just, I just want, yeah, I'm, I'm skeptical of, like, how they're actually keeping on top of that kind of thing, because, you know, it's one thing, like, when you're on a forum, and, like, a bunch of people report somebody, and, like, you're a moderator, and you're looking like, oh, yeah, that guy's a racist, and, like, you know, give yeah. him a temp ban or something, but, you know, like, is this too it's not like Microsoft, like, is recording all of our game sessions that we know of. Um, oh, to you mean review, the audio? yeah, to review voice chat and stuff. Is this too Big Brother though? Like, it's a little Big Brother. Well, Big Brother isn't peer review. That's the weird part. Is that it, it's us p 
policing I each guess other? I so, yeah. I don't know. I don't like nice people online. <laughs> Did anyone really even use the freaking Xbox 360's star rating ever? Remember, no. you could get like your star ranking. Oh, mm -hmm. they did have a reputation on yeah. 360 as well. I don't yeah. think very many people use that. I yeah. don't think anyone really Yeah, cared. I mean, people generally will just block somebody. That's the thing, is basically... Or mute them. You're a lot more likely to say, I did not like this person, than, hey, I really like this person. I think if you do start to go down, it's really hard to get back it's, up. Yeah, it's like when you buy crap online, like from Amazon or eBay. It's like, when they did a good job, you're like, and they give you the reminder to leave feedback. Eh, cool, you did your job. Thanks, A plus, very fast shipping. Cool. And then when you don't get your shit or it's broken, you're like, well, all right, what's up? Where where do I contact chat support right now? I want my replacement sent. And this person, they're like evil and stuff because they, how dare they send me something? A collector's edition box, the little ding in the corner. I pay good money for this, two hundred fifty bucks. So hold on, I am curious now. When was the last time you left a negative rating on Amazon? On Amazon? Yeah. I have never left a negative rating because I use Prime and I mostly buy stuff through Amazon. They actually, my experience with them actually, this is an endorsement of Amazon, but the two times I've had issues with shipment, one was they said it couldn't be delivered. The other, it was the uh, Hobbit uh, Unexpected Journey Blu-ray. Like the inside was kind of like crushed, so like the the kind of disc tray was yeah. like snapped off, so you couldn't. It kept was damaged. Both time I just got on their little chat thing within five minutes, like, oh, here's a replacement. Just mail it. we'll send you a package to mail it back. And the other one was undelivered. They were like, oh, we'll ship you on another one. I was like, oh, the price is more expensive now. And they're like, oh, we'll give you the old price. Don't worry. I'm like, cool. Sounds like an endorsement. But <laughs> buying from a different user, like I can tell you about eBay, there's, a, there's been shit with that. Give me one computers. good story. Before we move on, I want to hear one good eBay story of like, oh, I tried, you left just the... Oh, yeah, the best one is I tried buying Zelda's Adventure for the CDI back at the time. I, I mean, I don't follow it anymore, how much it costs on eBay. Back yeah. when I was interested in acquiring one, they were like 200 to $300. And I bought one, and it was someone someone had either burnt it or it was a damaged copy because when you got to a certain point, it would freeze when I tried to load the next screen. You couldn't get past it. Didn't look like it was scratched, and I asked them, and they're like, no, it's okay. So I got a little annoyed, tried to get my money back, and like, they wouldn't do it because they're like, no, I shipped it to you. Like, it's legit. Like, I don't know what happened, blah, blah. So I didn't like win that dispute or something. Or I didn't do it right, basically, because I was new to e the experience. So I got screwed out of that. So then I tried selling it away because, like, well, whatever. If it's a good copy, then I'll just sell it back to someone. But that person got angry at me. <laughs> but they well, of they course. did. You ride person. And then, <laughs> you keep passing on this <laughs> cursed game. <laughs> And then, okay, I used, so then, and then I used that money to buy a real copy. Oh. That is unbelievable. Oh, well. So someone the other, out there has... The other person was like, I live on a military base, and I know like military people are going to come after you and stuff if you don't give me my refund. Oh, my gosh. What? So then I just called... I like got a hold of eBay, and I was like, listen, this is what happened and shit. Like, can you do something? So they actually went back and go, ship us the game. We'll take a look at it. So they actually did get it back. Oh yeah, this this is a bootleg copy. Okay. Cool. We'll go back to the original seller. We tracked it. Like we will get a refund for you, and we're gonna hold on to this game because it's like illegal property or something. What happened to the guy at the military base? Did he get? Oh, they got there? like they I give him like they got their like money back. Once they told me it was like bootleg and stuff, I was like, uh -huh. all right. Like I wasn't sure and stuff. Like I thought maybe my I thought maybe my system was broken. Like no, you didn't. It was, you didn't think that. I mean, I thought it was something was wrong with it, but like it could have been my system. Like, I wasn't I, I wasn't hundred percent sure. Who the hell has a ROM of fucking the CDI <laughs> Zelda's adventure well, lying around? If I can sell it, it for two or three hundred dollars, I'm gonna make. I'm ROMs sure. Yeah, that's yeah. probably right. Someone figured yeah. that. But I was like, how did you get one in the first place? How do you even know how to like rip it and whatever? It was at the time it was beyond me how you could like do that for such a dead system, but it ended, it ended up working out. And I learned like, all right, next time you should just like actually just take a few minutes and actually do the actual process. You know, it sucks. Fill out the little stupid online form and submit your shit, and then. Mail them the stuff, and they usually side with you if you're like the buyer. I love nice. this edition of Damiani Story Time. That was a good story. <laughs> eBay, son. <laughs> eBay. So you endorse eBay as well? Is what I'm learning. Huh? What? You're no. endorsing all these companies. I, I use Amaz I have to use Amazon eBay to buy all this stuff for like timeline and pop fiction. Cool. And streaming stuff. Um, it's fun. So it is now time to settle all belt, all bets. All belts. Should I just redo that? <laughs> Reset. Reset, okay. And so it is now time at the end of the show to settle our, all of our bets. Uh, if you're watching this visually, uh, you may have noticed I'm wearing an orange hat. That is because Bravely Default made it onto the February NPDs. Uh, and Damiani said it never would. Do you want to know my secret research method for that? 
Oh, I'm sorry. I'm just pulling up a text message from Reggie right now saying that was a mistake in the MPD. <laughs> okay, what does Reggie say word for word? He said, I just watched the GT Time episode with you and uh -huh. Kyle Bossman making a bet about of course. Bradley Default. He is a fan. I know fans of Bradley Default were really excited <laughs> about the 200,000 sales data Lovely. that we had released. Unfortunately, that was just the shipped amount. The sell-through amount was unfortunately Being not that much. So, XO, XO, Reggie. So, um, the way I knew about this is I, when I was going to GameStop, they were like, oh, do you have a pre-order? And I said, hi, I'm here to pick up Bravely Default. Like, can you have a pre-order? I'm like, yeah. And they're like, oh, okay, this is our last one. Like, it, like it's my fault for yeah. coming in and pre-ordering it. <laughs> but uh, that's just the, that, <laughs> that's GameStop. that time alone was why I was sure that like, it, would, it would get on the NPDs. I know and it just made flawed. it. I am that, that's that, that's There's two mistakes with that. That's okay. that's one. That's VG charts method. Sorry, VG charts, but you guys have been like called out <laughs> yeah. too many times by. They know. By VG Gap. charts knows their garbage. You're, you're semi useful for yeah. for that type of stuff. I'm glad you've changed and whatever. Yeah. But two, they might have only sent like one or two copies to that store. Like I, you're uh, only getting two copies. So yeah. that store sold out of two copies. That means you sold two hundred thousand. Hey I man, I won the bet. Look, look, how are you pointing at me and telling me I'm wrong? Because. Oh, you Hilarious. won this battle, I will win the war. Uh, <laughs> anyways, speaking of GameStop and shipping, when, yeah. well, when I had to pick up Never Dead okay. Last year. for the review because they yeah. hadn't sent it to us before release date. Uh, yeah, the GameStop I went to said that. Yeah, yeah, all the stores, we only we got one copy for each system. That's all. Never I, Dead. One copy of Never Dead. Free. Wow. That's it happens. <laughs> no pre orders. Uh, <laughs> I do want to say another thing about this. They didn't though. put them on the shelf, they just have them in the back room. Um, with with uh, with Bravely Default getting on the NPDs and ranking number ten, uh, uh, Square Enix actually officially said that it sold more than uh, Lightning Returns, and so what that means is basically we're talking about the the growing irrelevance of the NPDs because like once you add in digital sales, Bravely Default surpassed Lightning Returns. Mm -hmm. Like how long are we honestly going to care about NPDs? Well, we kind of have it for a while. Ever since they stopped giving out the real numbers, just. Over time, just the importance of that's just been diminishing. At least, what like with this your arm span? How much do you care about NPDs? Whoa! <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I mean, so I'm, for people listening, that was I'm, less I'm, than an inch. I'm pretty much entirely pro digital age, though. So I'm. Wait, how many? So like, over the course of the last month, how, how many, many games have you downloaded? The, oh, um, Titanfall. Uh huh. Wow. Um, I guess everyone on PC downloaded Persona 3, which I've been playing and I love, and is excellent. Cool. Uh, I just, I just, uh, I, I did get it. Well, I game flied something recently, so I did get a disc-based game. But not, um, not a lot of like going to a store and buying games anymore. I, I mean, yeah. between GameFly and like downloading stuff and borrowing stuff from here, I never buy physical games. But I just, I mean, maybe if I didn't, didn't work here, I. Oh man, like I downloaded Zelda Wind Waker. Because like they're like, hey, it's it's early. You can download it early right now. And I'm like, okay, well, here's right. here's my money. Damiani, it should be said, the reason he's scowling at me right now, if you're listening, oh. he's it's just another scowl. He owns a physical copy of every single Zelda game. I assume is what that look is for. <laughs> no, the fact that you bought the Wind Waker. Oh. <laughs> oh. oh wait, no, I have a serious thing. I was saying, wait, real quick. You what? said you said bravely fault sold not more than Lightning Returns. I, I know you said that part, but yeah. you said because they didn't include digital sales. And you said Square Enix, right? Yeah. Didn't Nintendo publish that game here, so and Nintendo released the sales? Yeah, well, Square Nintendo Enix... Nintendo includes Square all Enix versions? still knows how much it sold. Are you talking about worldwide? Uh, I guess, I don't know. Their, their release was Because it was, was like... just U.S. Nintendo includes everything, which means that number was the final number, Kyle Bossman. What? Which means, I mean, who I won are your bet. sources? I won my bet. Who are your sources? I have no idea who my sources are. I'll just move <laughs> on. There you go. I mean, like... That's just bitterness. That's just bitterness, man. <laughs> You're just so mad I'm wearing this hat. I'll take the hat off for the rest of the episode if you ins No, I'm keeping it on. Um, <laughs> another bet we got to settle. The reason uh, why Bloodworth was always correct 100% of the time, Daniel Bloodworth, uh, is that I, last Friday, spent one hour building a little big planet level. Uh, the challenge was uh, if I could build a level on a whim or not. And uh, Ian played the completed level, the impartial judge, gave it a 4 out of 10. Ian's a pretentious asshole, though. Why would you pick uh, Ian to play it? Wow. Ian was the only one willing to Mandatory. play it. He'll, I mean, he'll Mandatory tell you. Update. He'll tell you the Drama. same thing. He'll, <laughs> he'll tell you this exact same thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you build a level in Dark Souls 2? No, I didn't. Well, then he's not going to... I mean, yeah. No, I mean, it was a... To be fair, I think a 4 out of 10 is a pretty good score for the level I produced. What was your level like? 
Um, it was based off the word science, is the word that Bloodworth gave me. And uh, they were, it was pretty simple, to be honest. Not complicated puzzles. Uh, actually, I think we're putting that in, in uh, Thanks for Playing, if you're curious to watch the whole thing go oh, down. Wait, yeah, it's I putting in Thanks it. for Playing now? Why yep. is it not on this? Uh, this is a podcast that you can like listen to uh, like on your car. People might not be able to see it. Yeah. I don't know, okay. I'm guessing. Um, but, uh, there's also what? an uh, interesting okay. caveat about this. If, if it was strictly just an hour from the moment he started, tried to start the game, no. Why, why don't you tell him about what it happened was, when it was one hour on, of on a, updates on a whim yeah. means you didn't update your game so there's I, a I lot put of a little bit on it too and there was an hour of <laughs> updates it was so sad um so let's do our big bet for next week all right all right everybody get ready according to box office mojo after its second week at the box office need for speed has only accumulated 33.6 million dollars despite a purported 60 million budget at the time of recording next week what will that total be Who's starting? Um, since Elise is our guest, she can guess last. So I'll start. All right, my guess? 39.1 million. Ah. Are these prices right rules? No. Okay. So what is that right now again? 33. 30, 33, 33. exact. Mm-hmm. 36.5 million. Uh, well, Kyle took mine, so I guess I'll do 38. Nice. I think this movie will make seven million more dollars, so I'll just do 40 million. I was I was thinking I'm like it can do seven, 12 million maybe. Do you want to do 40.6? Uh, yeah, I mean, oh jeez, I'm thinking international market. Need for Speed is not worth 40. this much stress. It's not. It's <laughs> I'll do I'll do uh, just. Just 40, I Straight guess. 40, we're locking it in. Yeah. Lock it in. We got sound effects now. Um, uh, okay. No, we don't. I, don't, I real, honestly don't think the editor will give me anything there. <laughs> um, <laughs> we need a bigger budget. Uh, but anyway, uh, results of last week's bet. Man, we got a lot of bets to cover. I like how it starts cycle. What was the too, last? I don't even remember last week's bet. Uh, percentage of people who had finished ground zeros. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. remember what I guessed, so enlighten us. Okay, Damiani guessed 66% of people had finished ground zeros on PlayStation 4. Mm -hmm. Bloodworth guessed 68. Brandon Jones guessed 79. You're responsible for his bets. <laughs> uh, and I guessed 60%. Actual result, number of people who finished ground zeros, 56.1%. I'm the winner this week. Nice. Going nice. down. So how does that 100% thing make sense? What 100% thing? Currently I'm 100% right, but now I'm wrong. Well, not anymore. Yeah, end of the episode, you're not 100% uh, right. 86.2% right. Here's the scary thing. The trophy for for reuniting with Chico or Paz, 70.2%. Meaning, like, let's say that game sold 100,000. There's at least 14,000 people who found Chico and then said, that's good, goodbye game. <laughs> They spent at least 20 or $30 on that game, and they're just like, oh, well, 45 minutes is enough. Goodbye. Good night. Maybe they're just not done yet. You know what? Is it, so, wait, yet. this is just, which percent, this is for the PS4 version, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, never mind. Oh, yeah, so it is at least 30. Yeah. yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. What are you doing? Finish the game. Go and finish it. Jeez. <laughs> Sheesh is the last <laughs> word. Anyway, as winner of the bet, I do get to close the show, so I guess I'll look into this camera. Everyone, thank you for watching. Uh, please leave comments below if you have something to say about the show, positive or negative or neutral. If you just want to say meh, go ahead. Uh, thank you for listening if you're watching the podcast and uh, listening to the podcast. And uh, we hope to see you next week. Elise, thanks for hopping in. Appreciate thanks for it. having me. It was fun. Yeah. <laughs> so much better than this Stop it. <laughs> <laughs>